Good morning, gentle humans. Howdy, my name is Diana Chu here at Slow Gaze, and it is a Friday. I have a lot of potential energy that I can feel, but I also have a lot of lazy energy. And by lazy, I mean slowing down energy. I don't feel particularly urgent to get some things done, which I'm really glad about. This whole year has been pushing, 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 and now I'm a little bit floaty, especially since my road trip. I'm coming down from that. A lot of emotional uh, drain from that, but a lot of focus. Even though you're driving and you're listening to Michael Buble and whatever Chinese opera CDs you, your mom has on repeat, and she's talking to you about your life and when you're gonna have baby babies and when you're going to open your first Roth IRA. Like we had so much to talk about, um, the state of the union, just such an intense time. And so I'm trying to come off it really being easy on myself. I talked to my dad about this, about routines, and he's like, actually there is no such thing as a routine. <laughs> In some ways I, I beg to differ, but yeah, maybe we have milestones and landmarks throughout the day, but every day is very, very different. If you lived by a lake or by mountains or some kind of natural, even if you're by a, a tree, let's say, um, but I think the larger the natural formation is, the more you'll understand what I'm about to say. My small, very small point is that every time I look out on the lake, it was different every single day. Sometimes it'd be green like an emerald and it would look like you're in the Bahamas. You had seagulls flocking. Some days there'd be a giant cargo ship in the port and you'd be like, how did that even get there? Sometimes it would look so foggy and dark that it looked like the sky was on the bottom and the water was on top. Some days it was so choppy, it was frozen over. There were just so many faces to that water and it made you feel small and big at the same time. So same with every single day. Uh, it feels like it should be the same and there are different touch points, but it's never the same. I live with Ben right now, I don't have kids. I am at that age where we're married for maybe about one and a half years already. So we've hit that honeymoon like prerequisite period. And now my parents and you know, people are wondering, they're not pressuring, but they're wondering. And then I start wondering myself. Actually, you should see what's on my YouTube like channels that I subscribe to and recommended home feed videos, beauty videos, decluttering videos, investing, TED talks. It's the kind of motivation that I'm looking for right now um, and to feel like I'm planning for a future that seems very foggy. I want to invite you a little bit into my home. I'm not gonna go too crazy. Once I start getting into home tours or decluttering my entire house videos, those take a lot of memory card space, which I don't have. I have to buy some equipment for this new camera, which I'm loving, by the way. It's the Sony ZV-1. Huge upgrade from my beautiful but aged iPhone 7. I was about to drop it right there. The case is from Sonics. I love it so much. I'm not precious with my uh, phones. You can see inside I have stickers on the back of it. One is from the Society of Illustrators back in New York when I actually submitted. My artwork that was, it's like a small little indie comic. I submitted it under an unpublished category. Just a small like, no one commissioned me to do this, but I wanted to do it because I'm weird and I like weird things. And I submitted it and I got a call. I was down in Baltimore and they're like, hey, you just won uh, the gold medal. You need to get your butt up here to collect within the next day. And if you don't, it's going to the next person on the roster. I'm like, I'm there, I'm there. So I went and I was clutching this tiny little metal. Um, not just one person gets it. It's like, you know, a bevy of categories, but it was one of those, like, if I ever could live to the apex of my dreams, that would be one thing on my list. It was that getting into the annals of American Illustration, Society of Illustrators, and getting published by the New York Times. And I was so happy and I felt like I was on like a path of illustratorship. And then I moved to the Midwest and now it feels a lot harder to parse. That sticker was from that time. I remember coming out of that, clutching that little metal to my chest, walking through New York like, does anybody know what I'm holding? Like almost like, please don't take this moment from me. I can't even imagine that I'm living through this right now. I was just clutching it and like walking really fast with this giant grin on my face. I had no one to really share that moment with. Ben was in Philadelphia. I was just like in a daze, in a frenzy. I love New York. I would live there in a heartbeat. It fills me with such 
amazing energy. I can walk around till 3 a.m. just riding the train by myself, reading books, soaking in that energy. Maybe it's because I used to live in Hong Kong that it's kind of a nice flip, a nice pairing. And now I'm in Milwaukee and it's so different. I'm just ranting. I'm just ranting. Wow, I guess that's uh, the other sticker on my phone and it's just a Wisconsin 21 sticker, like the type you put on your license plate. Where was I going with all this? I really wasn't going anywhere. So part of this minimalist journey for me is really just trying to get everything in a place that I feel like I could just get up and leave. And I'm surprised by how urgent it feels, but also I'm not because this pandemic has made everything that much sharper and brought things into focus that I'm like, what am I doing sitting here rearranging my makeup every single time I need to just get rid of stuff, focus on the things that I actually need, live simpler so that I can be transferable. Let's cut to some decluttering. Now we are in vlogging mode. Welcome to uh, this pile of boxes. So I'm in my living room right now. It is in disarray, stockpiling books, drinking beer, lounging on the couch, plenty and we have been trying to figure out uh, this situation here, which is our media station. We have a bunch of records we're trying to sort through and sell. And then back to this box pile mountain here, I have been shopping a lot. I've been shopping a lot uh, this year, mostly before I started YouTube. And once I did, I was like, I have to re-examine my belongings. And this is definitely anxiety inducing. It makes me quite embarrassed. Not that I'm buying heaters over and over and over again, but <laughs> I do need to slow my roll. You do see a Cracker Barrel box because we bought a record from Cracker Barrel. Who knew? Anyway, I'm going to break these all down and feel a little less insane. I've kept them in semi-box form because I've been selling a lot of stuff on Depop. I've linked my Depop in every video. If you're interested in seeing what I have to sell, I only have a few things up right now, but um, I'm planning to do a whole Depop like upload sometime soon. Mostly shoes, clothes, fashion items. I am not depopping my makeup. I've gotten a lot of comments about where my makeup is going, especially the stuff that I declutter. Let's turn you around while I talk to you. I feel like I don't need to justify it to anyone. I am a regular human that's just trying to do the best for the environment and for social justice. I'm trying to not be wasteful. And yet I was very wasteful by buying all of these things. Handing my makeup off to friends and family, especially. I just got to see my mom, so she's got a, a nice goodie bag to go through. Um, but the rest of it, I've been looking for women's shelters, for people who would be interested in getting donated items. I've also been trying to learn sanitation practices for all my makeup palettes. Anyway, it is something that I'm not going to go too much into at that level of scrutiny on YouTube. It's just not healthy. I'm just doing my best. I'm gonna break this down. I do want to do some cleaning and figure out this bookshelf again. I mentioned in another video that this is like the only bookshelf that we have books on any longer. And that's why it's kind of crazy right now. I just put all tchotchkes up there. Um, and then a lot of like books that have survived massive, massive declutterings. I have been going to Half Price Bookstore with Ben and we've been selling a bunch of our books. We love books. We love cookbooks, art books, you name it. I don't need my home to become a library. And this is what is plaguing me here. I have so many Lucky Peach magazines that I'm not willing to part with yet because if you don't follow Lucky Peach, it is a publication that David Chang of Momofuku, is it Momofuku and Milk Bar? Anyway, he's quite the sensation, um, kind of a abrasive personality, really blunt, but he is on TV and Netflix and you might know him. <laughs> but Lucky Peach is such a great experimental magazine. They have since gone defunct, I think two years ago. Oh yeah, summer 2017, the suburbs. I tried to stockpile them. Now that I have, what am I doing? Just sitting on them? Becoming a museum? Okay, leaving one box. And then this is the end pile with a bunch of stuffing. This can go straight outside to the recycling. I'm gonna keep this box. I think I'm gonna keep it in case. And I am planning for a giveaway. 
I'm not sure how I feel about YouTube give giveaways, to be honest. I think the general, like, if I strip all of my neuroticism away, it's nice because people get to, like, share in the wealth. <laughs> and there's makeup that I'm not using, new products that I just never will use. Um, this is an empty box, by the way, but it's so beautiful. Royal Duo blushes and their whole PR kit came in this gorgeous box. So I'm like, if I'm going to do a giveaway, I might as well put it in this gorgeous box. So I might keep that we'll see and then a couple of other things that need to just like get broken down further um i think these are both like watch bags one of them must be my husband's and then this is the box for the camera that i'm holding right now so i don't know if i need this but i have to actually empty it out etc i'm in a cleaning mood uh, welcome to my coffee bar. This espresso machine my dad bought because he's like, in anticipation of my stay with you for a few months, I need good coffee. And so he bought this hulk of a beautiful espresso machine. I had not previously owned or known that this thing existed or anything like that could exist in my house. And uh, we've been using it religiously since. I was more of the uh, Chemex maker person, the pour over. A lot of these accoutrements are from my husband. Uh, he is definitely more the coffee nerd than I am. I didn't even have a kettle for the longest time. Yes, I was boiling water in a pot for a long time. And then another friend came to stay with me during grad school, which was my like poor college day times. And I was like, I'm not gonna buy like a kettle. I just have a pot. I don't need anything else. This is a very dirty counter. So I'm gonna wipe that down. Some African violets that my mom gifted to me. You can see that three little new bud growths are happening. And then just wipe this counter down because our massive gorgeous jade plant over here is shedding as you can see on the floor. Okay, so swept that up real quick. Alexa hides behind the jade plant and sits on this little like green plate over here. This guy has just been amazing. And I do need to figure out their leaves. My cat usually loves sleeping in this window during the summer when we lift it up. Tiny little ledge that he stuffs himself into like a little sausage and he can smell the outside world through the screen. Uh, but then sometimes he gets a little snacky and does not ingest it, but he definitely chomps really hard on this plant, uh, as you can see. And we moved it upstairs because I don't allow him upstairs where our master bedroom is because I'm allergic to cats, actually. <laughs> and I've trained him to not go upstairs and not get his dander up there. Um, but then sometimes he just can't help himself when there are really exciting things that present themselves. So this feels just a little better. Small perk up. It's the small wins, right? Thank you for all of the words of encouragement. I have gotten comments about Hey Diana, it's okay, you're only human. You can welcome us into your home because we already love you and that means so much to me. I'm glad that people can connect with my vibe. My vibrations are going out into the universe and I really try to be more of a force of not just positivity, but of comfort, of empathy. I am an empath, I am a dreamer, and I like connecting, but in a very like humble way. I don't want to be out there with attention or spotlight. I just wanna be out there so that I can like connect with you, if that makes sense. So thank you for like that level of empathy and that space for me to feel safe enough to let you into my inner sanctum. This is a very public platform and there's fear. There's a lot of fear that goes into showing how you truly live. I was watching a Joshua Becker like minimalist video, why people stage their homes, how they do when they're trying to have an open house. They clean everything. They even rent a storage unit sometimes and just get all of the furniture out of the house and make it as minimal and clean and perfect as possible. And it's the best the house has looked since moving in, yet when we're actually living in a house, we don't do that for ourselves. Like the best the house is looking is only for the few days or weeks that you're uh, trying to move out of the house. I really took that to heart and I have not staged this room. So let me show you. <laughs> I have Haley Evans. Is it Haley Evans? I always forget because she has like a few older videos with her maiden name. This is the master bedroom and there is stuff everywhere. This is my closet. 
You can see I have my thongs and my dirty laundry over here. This is the palette of stuff that usually gets tucked in. I can actually roll it into that little corner and it fits perfectly. But then as you can imagine, if I want to access er, this pile of stuff, I have to like muscle it out. Honestly, the more storage options I have, the more I fill them. You know what I mean? So I have all my coats here, I have shoes. And this is in disarray, as is this and all this. I tried to like have a system and it's going all right. I think the pant system is a little bit annoying. So I've been putting my pants back like onto the shelves like I have usually. Usually this Dyson isn't here and I have my childhood stuffies up there. So I'm gonna try and like address some of this right now. This is from my packed bags that I came back from Las Vegas and I had a lot of like 12 year old tampons, like not from when I was 12, but like literally they're 12 years old um, and they never got used up. These are piles of things that I'm trying to get rid of either on Depop or do a video for. And yeah, it's a lot. Uh, sometimes I feel really bad about it. Sometimes I feel really good about it. The good days I'm like, okay, I'm being slow and intentional. I literally will go through this pile and like put it on my body, take good photos of it and give it the respect it deserves as I send it out on its like maiden voyage to someone else um, in the world. So like, that's great. I think that's a much better way of letting it go and letting it get another life and home with someone and yet it takes so much time and so much space. And then I have this pile of makeup that I had decluttered in my overall makeup declutter and I'm trying to figure out who to send it to and I've been sorting some things out. And then my mom made me these like pillows. Fabric that's from the movie Frozen because she has, oh my God, it's such a long but uninteresting story. <laughs> she has like a new student in her life that has a daughter and she's like now the surrogate's grandmother um and she's been making a bunch of things for that little child she's so cute i don't know what i'm gonna do with them but they're here and they're from my mom and they're great so then i have like all the stuff that i haven't even unpacked yet from my trip and i really need to address this the main drawer i want to address today is this one a pair of scissors because I'm always like, well, I was unpacking boxes and unpacking boxes up here in my room. Everything else in here are for my empties videos, plus dust bags and just stuff that I, uh, I have to address this. Okay, let's get on it. I know, I know, I know. Anybody, girl, I know. Ain't in anybody's whip I've seen. Ain't in anybody, girls, I know. Of this box of decluttered goodbye items. <laughs> oh, so sad. I have identified a few that are still tugging at my heartstrings. And it's not like I went through this box uh, one more time and I was like, let me re-declutter what I decluttered for you on camera. Like this is the box of stuff. These items here are actually ones that they were out of sight, out of mind, still in that box, but I was going through my day to day and these were like pulling at me from my brain strings. And so I was like, oh, I kind of want to reach for this or like, where did that one go? Oh, I decluttered it. So these are like some that I want to revisit maybe. And I have the luxury of changing my mind. I have the luxury of still having these products with me physically. I could have just, instead of decluttering, put everything in like a makeup purgatory and that would have worked out pretty well. We have the Aether Beauty gorgeous Joshua Tree palette here. Don't think I'll keep this just because I, I really don't use colorful shadows, but I do like a few of these and I've never taken any shadow out of their palettes before. Like I've never depotted um, before and it kind of scares me, but this is the palette that would warrant that because the packaging is cardboard because it seems like you're meant to depot them for the end of its life when you're ready to recycle the packaging. That's a candidate. Honey palette still, ugh, every time I open it, I'm like, this makes so much sense for me. It is all neutral honey tone browns that are 
close to my skin tone. Why am I not using this more? And then the MAC shadows, honestly, these two shouldn't even be part of that. Sand Trope, excuse me, and Monococo. Lightning Bug from ColourPop, maybe I can put that back as well. And then this Tet -a Tint from MAC, Madeira Bronzer, RMS. She's gorgeous, but maybe I can put her back too. Okay, so those are the things already that I'm like, hmm, maybe I should undeclutter them, but really I, I should keep myself pretty on the leash here. This is also Velvet Decade by Lisa Eldridge. I used it once, a meager one time, and this teaches me not to buy trios or not to buy sets of things because really the only shade that I should have bought from her was Velvet Fawn. And sometimes it's really hard to tell. Sometimes you're like, okay, I need a red, a dark brown, and a nude. Like, those are three very different shades. I got Velvet Jazz, Velvet Decade, and Velvet Fawn. This trio makes so much sense. I use reds, I use dark vampy, especially brown colors, and then this peachy nude looks perfect. So I, I felt like I was making a really smart decision, but it was an isolated one. I don't need more reds and I don't need more browns, so I should have really just bought that one Velvet Fawn. I'm upset that I have something in my collection that I only used once. And yes, I can pass this along to someone else who uh, doesn't mind my germy germs, especially during the pandemic. It is so hard to find places and warranted, warrantedly so, to find places that are accepting lightly used makeup. I should just not have this pile in the house and all will be well. Once it's out of my hands, it's out of my mind. Progress! So I emptied this entire drawer. She is now a void. I have rejigged my sweaters and refolded them so that they're color coded. So let's see how long that lasts. And then I just moved a little bit of this stuff around. I had the shelf that I brought back from work that I might integrate into this space. But yeah, I want to re-look at these two shelves in particular because I think that a lot of this stuff here can actually live here and a lot of this stuff here can also live in that void. So the other progress that I made is I unpacked a little bit of this um, from my travels and packed my entire suitcase. So she's just sitting there empty for now. Um, I hung up some clothes and then this is my empties. This is like all the empties that I want to do for a video. This has to get sorted out. Also managed to break down all the boxes and put them there. Let me just show you <laughs> what this mess is. I have hair stuff. I have some more hair stuff. My brushes, my lip glosses and such, some skincare palettes that I have kept, a lot of blush and bronzer and highlight situations, Natasha Denona palettes that I want to do a video on, especially these three midi palettes, bronze, sunrise, and the new glam palette. Some Charlotte Tilbury, and then yeah, some other things that I'm trying to get all of my use out of and my handy dandy Wisconsin made mirror. We have a new Salt NYC palette, which I have not featured on my chan channel yet because it's very new to me. So I wanted to do a dedicated video on that. Um, and then these are some extras. I try not to keep duplicates or backups at all. But some of these, I mean, I've been trying to do a dry shampoo video. Like there's a lot of stuff that I have like plans for, some nail polish remover and such. So already I can tell you that none of this stuff in this little wicker basket here is getting donated. I'm going to put that immediately in here as a stash. Oh, the other thing that I like was thinking about in my declutter stash was this Westman Atelier lip suede. One of my first YouTube videos was actually a review of this. It's still on my channel right now. It warrants another review from me. So I kept it and I want to see if I can just do another review. I've tried to vow for myself not to buy any more Westman Atelier pods, especially not the iPods, but like these gorgeous enamel shells because she will be coming out with refillable packaging that these clamshells are the first to be refillable. So if I'm going to get another shade of, let's say, her super loaded tinted highlight or her butter bronzer, 
I should wait. I should wait on it until everything is refillable. I actually have three compacts of this now. The Lip Suede, I have Peau de Peche, and then Peau de Soleil, which I have not featured on my channel yet. Those are all different color compacts. We have red, black, and then a really gorgeous gold. Lip stuff, nail stuff, and then this down here. So that's what I'm saying. I just fill up this cart, even though this is chock full there's no system here. And I pride myself on systems. Some random boxes. Let me try and get all of this kind of reconfigured. Wish me luck. I will be super duper alley -ooper honest with y'all. This feels good. I've reinstated my rug. I have taken out the Ikea cart on the right hand side. I've taken off my little like wall hanging here that was covering this window. Okay, this is Diana from the future. <laughs> I lost so much footage yesterday. It almost brought me to tears. I wanted to say hello again from the future. You can tell because I have short hair. The continuity is not here. I will admit that. However, I feel like I left out the biggest component to this rejig. I didn't show you um, what happened to this vanity space. I kind of just alluded to it with some blood and I just like plopped some things up here but I didn't tell you like how this ended up. I also didn't show you this part where um, all of my single shadows are back. I do like wear the same three earrings every single day. Three pairs rather and they're all from a jury. I have the smaller hoops in right now. When I really want to push the boat out I can put these on. And then I have my lipsticks, the lip suede palette, and then the rouge lip palette down there, some perfumes, these three on the end here plus the replica by the fireplace, these are my like fall winter staples, and then these two are summery. This one actually came from my road trip from Nevada, I had this back in college, and if you know who this is by, I mean please put it down in the comments because Sarah Jessica Parker came out with a, a perfume. Who remembered that? It actually is still really good. I need to use this up. Bringing me lots of joy. Hair stuff. And then this is how this turned out. Uh, <laughs> it isn't the best system. You can see the wicker basket stayed and then back there in the sad dunce corner is my nail polish. I don't reach for it nowadays uh, that much anyway. For now it'll live as such. I'm expecting these three palettes to get consolidated into one. My gold palette is missing from this because I was using it today, uh, but usually it would fit in here. And I'm also trying to consolidate those two into my salt NYC palette, so hopefully this space will just kind of disappear a little bit. Um, all my Charlotte Tilbury's and one Tom Ford, the Rowan palette. Uh, and then the palettes I know I can just never get rid of, at least for now. Um, this Melt one, sorry, I always think it's Melt because I think of Melt Honey, but no, it's not Melt Honey, it's Urban Decay Naked Honey. This I want to compare swatches against the Natasha Denona Gold palette and see, you know, if they're dupes enough for my favorite shades, I would keep one or the other. And then yes, this is the Salt NYC palette. And then in here, this heavy mother load. I did refill this with Makeup Purgatory. It's like Pandora's box. Uh, but yeah, this is stuff that I, I really want to just test. I just had this instinctual feeling that if it was to magically disappear from my life, I probably wouldn't be all that sad or I would feel like I still had everything I needed. Um, so we'll see. I might open this up in a few months, if not sooner, just to see if there are anything that I was like dreaming about. It'll be here waiting for me. And then this is the makeup um, and skincare selection. They're like little standing sentinels. I have haphazardly put the blush, bronzers, and highlighters on the shelf, as long as it's off of the cart, which I have wheeled out unceremoniously. Yes, I'm deferring my decisions, but I'll figure it out again on a different day. I don't want to put too much pressure on myself. A lot of these declutter situations and a lot of these very extreme homemaker over things, you know, they are compressing a lot of time, energy, and intentionality into a bite-sized video for you to consume. And I'm really hoping to not perpetuate that cycle when it doesn't make sense for me. Like, yes, I want to get it done. I really want to get it done, but right now I'm not 
able to make these blushy decisions. Looking at my highlighters, I'm like, am I even needing highlighters anymore in my life? Because now that I have the Peau de Peche and the Peau de Soleil from Westman Atelier, I think that they are like replacing my blush slash highlighter and my bronzer slash highlighter, depending on which shade you're referring to. I'm really into cutting down steps at this time, so I feel like I don't need like a dedicated highlighter. Granted, I have them, so why shouldn't I use them? But that's another philosophical thing. We should reconvene tomorrow. I hope you're having a wonderful day, morning or noon or night, wherever you are. I will see you on the next video. Adios.